Hello Rebrand Gang and welcome to episode 50 of Rebrand Everything, the weekly graphic design show where we redesign the logo of big or famous companies. This week we're going to be redesigning the Alibaba logo. Let's go. So Alibaba is a global marketplace and one of the world's biggest e-commerce stores. It has been referred to as the Amazon of China because it's super successful and super huge just like Amazon is. Interestingly, they both use the colour orange and they both start with the letter A, but I think all of that is just coincidental. So let's take a closer look at the Alibaba logo. What is that icon meant to be? Apparently, the logo is a freeform, loose paint stroke style A, which also includes a silhouette of a smiling and satisfied customer. I don't know if this is an intentional thing or not, but I can also see like an EZ, which maybe implies like easy, like easy customer service, easy to buy from. I don't know if I just made that up completely. Maybe I'm reaching for something that isn't there, but I can definitely see an E and a Z in there as well, so maybe double meaning. Now the icon is also accompanied by this text, which is actually Alibaba's own custom font. When I did a little bit of research into this font, it actually gave me some really good indication of how they want their brand to be perceived. A couple of paragraphs in this article were all I really needed for my research. Alibaba surveyed its employees around the world to pin down nine keywords that characterized Alibaba, which shaped the entire design process. Dynamic, variable, young, passionate, bold, powerful, future, innovation, and technology was to see Alibaba as a 20 year old who's young and bristling with energy. Alibaba sans fonts is reliable but energetic and young but level headed. The baseline or bottom half of the words tend to be sturdy while the upper half is rounder and more rhythmic. It's the combination of two extremes. It tells readers I'm grounded but I'm also dynamic. It's pretty good that somebody else has done the research and served it up like this so now I've got a good understanding of how they want their brand to be perceived. I like the idea of the font and I also like the idea of the actual icon itself but the way these two sit together just clashes. The varying thickness of the line in the icon doesn't seem to fit with the solid sans serif that they've got. So even though I've just said that I don't know if that's just purely opinion so let me know what you think in the comments below. So today I'm going to show you my process of sketching out some ideas for the Alibaba logo and then developing that in Illustrator to produce five final icons which you can vote for at the end. So let's get into it. So it's time to start sketching out some ideas based on what we've just learned about Alibaba. I like the idea behind the little smiling man in the logo. It's kind of cool. It's just that, that thin line style that I'm not sure about. So my first few sketches were based around incorporating a smiling face into the A in a much more definite and solid way. I also started looking at some other designs revolving around a smile forming the crossbar on a capital A. When sketching out ideas, I kept looking back at the keywords that characterise Alibaba that I'd found from the font breakdown earlier. I wanted to make sure my ideas were staying on track and staying in the lane that they're trying to go down to help give the perception that they want to give. Also, while sketching, I do like to keep Adobe fonts open so that I can quickly build ideas of fonts that would work for the style and the vibe that I'm trying to achieve with each option of the icon. It's very hard to draw out a font for me anyway, I'm not that good at drawing. So instead of trying to draw out every letter on a font, I just like to get Adobe fonts open on the screen, get the pad or iPad or whatever you sketch with there, um, and it's just like you can just build a link in your mind and kind of just write down what font you think might work with each icon option. So this is it, the very messy sketching stage. At this point, I am just literally trying to get all my ideas out of my head and onto the paper. I'm not worried about if they're bad ideas. I'm not worried about if they're good ideas. I'm basically just getting everything out there for further development in the future in Illustrator. So that's it for the sketching stage. Let's move into Illustrator. So I think this is gonna be my last video of 2019 as I need to spend Christmas catching up on the sleep that I've missed throughout the year. I hope you have a good Christmas, a good new year. And after this episode, I will see you in January, unless I get a little bit of spare time and I might end up making another redesigning subscriber logos video. And also please don't forget to press like on this video. If you like this video, it definitely helps the channel out. Let's get on with this. So for option one, I wanted to try simplifying the current concept. The plan was to take it back to its rawest and purest form by simplifying what they currently have whilst retaining the idea of an A shape and a satisfied customer icon. I built the shape using a circle with a stroke so that I could easily adjust the thickness as the icon was developed. To create the smile, it was simply a case of just duplicating the outer circle and then removing the top half and scaling it down. When I was looking for a typeface that sat nicely next to the icon, I tried adjusting the icon so that it had rounded ends on each end of the smile. 
I wasn't completely sure it worked, so I ended up developing the two different styles alongside each other. My final decision is that the hard lines on the top of the smile make it more solid and geometric style logo. The rounded corners on the top version also seem to make the face look more smug than satisfied. Also, for anyone wondering what these fonts are, the rounded looking one is called EXO and the other sans serif below is Montserrat. Two. So option two is also going to include the smile of a satisfied customer, but instead of a lowercase a, we're going to explore an uppercase alternative. The smile is made by using a stroke profile and also stacking the black line above the white line to give the illusion that the smile is cutting through the main body of our A. I had to give the width tool a little bit of air time too, as I needed the ends of the smile to be less pointy and more rounded so it looked more like a smile and less like a stab wound. To add to the smile, I also added some little smile creases like these bits here. I was in two minds about this as it seemed like a small detail to add where I normally like to make my logos kind of big, clear and chunky. Um, but I think they add to the overall design so they're worth keeping. So font wise for this option, I chose a font called Ephra. It seemed to fit the vibe without clashing or making it too hard to read. It didn't actually strike me at the time of creating this, but now I'm looking at this again, I've just realized that this smile would almost definitely be taken as a complete rip off of the Amazon logo if they actually use this logo. That is a little bit of a shame really, because I quite liked this option. Three. So for option three, I was essentially taking a similar avenue to the original logo again, but this time I wanted to keep it a bit truer to their current style. My main points of concern on their current logo were the fine details getting lost at smaller sizes, so this option was my chance to give it a thicker, more powerful look. I started out with a font that had a loose A but with like a thick brush stroke, and then I used the pen tool to draw over this in black and white to add and remove some parts which eventually formed a face. I again used a stroke profile on my stroke to make the lines look a little bit more natural so it fitted in nicely with the style of the font. Whilst this is a little bit looser than my usual style logos, I quite liked how the little face looked. To encase the icon, I used a little orange circle, and the reason for this is so that I could use a sans serif font next to it without it clashing. I feel like their current logo has a lot of dead space above the tail on the A icon, so by putting my icon in the circle, it kind of remedies this. Four. So then every option so far has been basically building on the original concept of their current logo. So I wanted option four to focus more on the global power of Alibaba. As I live in the UK, the only thing I know about Alibaba is that it's basically a global shipping website, global e-commerce website. And that is why I wanted to follow down the avenue of giving this logo like a global style. So if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know that I absolutely love just defaulting to use the first letter of a company name to be the starting point of my icon options. But for this option, I wanted to be a little bit more subtle. I thought we could create a globe icon that has some little Easter egg A's inside it. So nothing too dominant and too forward, just like just hidden. So you only see them if you're looking for them. I used a lot of stacking white and black strokes again to give me the separation I needed between the lines so that the A shape looked like it was in front of the rest of the globe. Once I had the icon created, I wanted to find a font that looked sturdy whilst also being a little bit rounded and kind of consumer friendly. I tried a couple of fonts, but the best option for me was Cotext Bold. Five. So option five was another angle on the global idea. This time, instead of putting the A inside a globe, I thought that the globe could become the main part of a lowercase a. After developing a few ideas, I was happy with the look of the icon, but once I'd tried it inside an orange box, I thought that just made it look a lot, lot stronger. That happens quite regularly with the icons I design. I always find that I just like it inside a like a holding device. Then once that was done, I matched the height of the text to the height of the icon within the box, and that made it look nicely balanced and it, everything lines up nicely, all alignments good, the spacing looked good, so we were good to go. The only concern I have about this logo is perhaps that the scalability might not be great. There are quite a lot of lines used to create the globe shape, so I just worry about that a little bit when it's down at like business card size or like smaller on an app or something like that. But then saying that, the good thing about this option is that the icon could be immediately used alone for all social media profile images, app icons, and anywhere else that required a square format. Okay then Rebrand Gang, just before I show you the final options, I just want to remind you to press the little button up here and vote for your favourite option. And then go ahead straight down to the comments below and let me know why that was your favourite and what you would have done differently. Remember to press like on the video if you haven't already, that really helps the channel out. Also remember to press subscribe and put the little bell on if you want to be notified the first time I upload in the year 2020. Oh my god, I can't believe it's the year 2020. Okay then Rebrand Gang, let's see them final options.